Now, just returning to this breakthrough meeting between our Defence Minister Richard Miles and his Chinese counterpart, General Wei, in Singapore, the face-to-face -face discussion lasted more than an hour, so it wasn't as if they spoke while passing in the corridor. The pair met on the sideline of this Shangri-La Defence Dialogue Summit, and it marks the first time in three years, basically, that the Defence Ministers of the two countries have even met. It is a good first step to ending the diplomatic deep freeze between Beijing and Canberra. Joining me now to discuss this is Michael Shoebridge from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Michael, thank you very much for your time. You'd have to consider this a positive step, wouldn't you? Yes, Chris, it is. Uh, the fact that there's ministerial contact between a senior Australian government minister, not just the Defence Minister, but our Deputy Prime Minister, and General Wei, the minister over the top of the People's Liberation Army. So uh, it'd be great to see other ministerial contact outside the defence field, and trade would be the one we would want to see. Uh, but I think we've got to be a bit cautious about how much celebration and how many Australian lobsters that we can't sell to the Chinese we should eat ourselves in celebration. <laughs> this is a very good point. One of the issues raised was the incident on... May the 26th, when a Chinese fighter jet uh, aggressively challenged an Australian surveillance aircraft in international airspace over the South China Sea. Have you managed to ascertain how General Wei responded in that meeting to the criticism about that incident from Richard Miles? Not in the meeting, Chris, but it will have been consistent what, with what he said publicly and with what Chinese government media has said about that, which is to blame Australia. Uh, to claim that China's enforcing rights that Beijing knows it doesn't have and to tell us it's our problem for being in international airspace. General Wei gave a speech at this Shangri-La dialogue and he said China uh, doesn't bully anyone. Uh, it wants peaceful cooperation and win-win outcomes with everybody. And he completely failed to engage with the actions, the dangerous actions of the Chinese military that he directs, not just against Australia, but in the South China Sea, around Taiwan, around Japan, and on the India-China border. And I think that gets to the heart of expectations from this meeting. If Beijing and General Wei as the defence minister has such an enormous gap between what he says, you know, China believes in peaceful cooperation and win-win outcomes, and what their military are actually doing, like almost causing mid-air collisions and crashes, then it's really a dialogue that is based on pretense, and that's not proper engagement. No, pretense, lies and propaganda. Richard Miles went to a great deal of trouble to say on a number of occasions that we will not compromise our values, we won't compromise our sovereignty if we regain dialogue with Chinese officials. Uh, he's handling it well, isn't he? Yes, he is. And I think uh, saying that they were the ground rules for having this meeting was really the smartest thing to be done. Because, you know, we've had people in our country saying, well, we've got to offer a bunch of policy changes to get this meeting. Uh, the new government's been quite consistent. They mean what they say about signing up to the structural China policies that we've put in place over the last five years to deal with a more aggressive China. He's following through on that. I think we've got to realise Beijing wants something. That's why they're having this meeting. And what I think they want is us to get out of their way as they have a more direct military role in the, so in the Solomon Islands. And they don't want Richard Miles kicking the Chinese port operator out of Darwin, our strategic port in the north. Yeah. Trade Minister Don Farrell has drawn the short straw, David, because he has to try and restore trade meetings with China. He says he can do it. What are his chances? Well, this is the real test of whether these words and this meeting mean anything at all or they're just another example of China saying one thing and doing the opposite. We have to judge China by its actions, not its words. And the most important action, aside from not proceeding with that military presence in the South Pacific, would be reversing the $20 billion of economic coercion and letting Chinese consumers eat our lobsters, drink our wine and cook our barley. Yeah. China copped it from all sides throughout those two days in the summit in Singapore. 
they won't like being lectured to by the rest of the world, will they? No, but this is a, back to that point about how is it everybody is noticing an aggressive China, but China denies being aggressive? You know, if, if you're the only person in the room that thinks you're not doing anything wrong and everybody else thinks you are, it might be time to look in the mirror. <laughs> so let's hope Beijing does that. Well said. Michael Shoebridge, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Chris.